Hey, thank you for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. We're glad that you're with us today. Man, you know, it's just a good time every week. We got another great show lined up. This time we have, man, you want to tell them who our special guest is? They're not even going to believe it, are they? No, no. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, today it's a special day because the one and only Ja Ritchie, Ja Ritchie, is yeah. up in the camp today and it's going to be a blast yes absolutely so yeah definitely you're, you're gonna want to stick around to hear that we've got music industry news for you and of course beats produced by yours truly so don't go anywhere you got a great show lined up and you know i just can't wait to get into it how about you yeah let's do it all right let's go
say welcome once more to the Music Marvels with a chick with beats and Breezy Gibson radio podcast broadcast. And today is a very special day. Our guest is a man that's got total wisdom. <laughs> he's a very positive person, and he's also very talented as a musician. And so without any further ado, let's bring to the show the one and only Ja Ritchie. Ja, are you there? I'm here live and direct blessings to each and every one. Motivation and ambition is the key. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Motivation and ambition is the key. All right, all right. That's that's a great way to break in right there, to come in with us. Um, and so for all the listeners out there, uh, how about sharing with the listeners you know, just who is Ja Ritchie? Uh, where were you born? Where did you come come from? And what are some of the things, the great things you represent on Earth today? Well, uh, actually, uh, I block from uh, the nation's capital. And um, I came down here to down south in the mid 80s. And at the time that I reached down south, it was kind of a musical transition period, especially in the uh, Fulton County area, meaning that uh, the reggae vibes were not too heavy down here then as it were in other places like say Florida and New York and maybe out California. They were more into like coming out of the rock stage and I happened to be able to play in the first reggae band here in the town and we happened to play for the great man Peter Taj, which actually launched myself through that through this band that was here. It was a band formerly called the Skin Kings and it was kind of revolutionary at the time down south because it was an interracial situation. And at that time in the mid 80s, the music scene was not as it is now, meaning that the certain bands like the reggae bands were able to play in areas where the top 40 bands were not hired to play. And that's just the facts of the situation you now shows the growth in the city sonically. And oh. from that point, when that band broke up, I decided decide to start my own group, which was Jarvis and the Zion Steppers. And Jarvis and the Zion Steppers went on to play before every major foundation reggae artist from Peter Tosh, Third World, Steel Pose, Meditations, Diamonds, Aswad, King Sunny Day, in this area. And that was all new at the time, because as you know, uh, Bob Marley had transitioned in the 80s and when certain things happened musically, people chime into it to see if they can get the best commercial benefit out of it. So the reggae vibes was on and popping from 82 on straight on up to when things got a little changed around, say 90. And that's how I made my mark here. And I recorded two records, a few records, created my own label, Samati Music Entertainment. And I've had the pleasure to play with the finest musicians in Atlanta. Those ones whose names is ringing around the city as we speak. And that's just a little rundown on Zavichi. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, now see, you woke up some, you, you overturned some stones right there and you woke up some some plants right there because now I remember back in the day, Skin Kings. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, skin King. I would see the the uh, advertisements everywhere. I see the posters everywhere. I'd read in the newspaper, creative loafing everywhere. Skin King. I heard on the radio. Skin King. I, and you know, I mean, this is a celebration for me, knowing that you're sharing with our listeners that you were part of the Skin Kings. Oh my. Yeah, original Skin King man. I mean, to be honest, okay, I'm gonna share something with you. When I first came down here, right, my first introduction to the Fulton County area was opening up for the Steel Post Band at the 688 Club on Spring Street because- Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was the first, that was my first introduction, man. 
And uh, I was mesmerized because, to be honest with you, this, that band still post, they came from Birmingham, England, and their whole style and fashion was something that down south had never seen anything like that. And to have the pleasure of hitting the stage for the first time in Atlanta and opening up for the magnificent, sonically well-balanced Steel Pulse Band, man, that art to me, you know, from there it was all signals go. <laughs> Oh, all signals go. Okay. Wow, that's that's strong right there. That's heavy weight, heavy weight. A chick with beats, you got questions? Man, I'm just kind of basking in all this information, and you know, like it's it's overwhelming to to hear how important you are uh, to the scene, and you know how um, you've affected you know history and been a part of it. So this is just awesome. I'm just sitting here taking it all in. Thank you. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, when I look upon music, it's not just song and dance and stage show antics and, you know, and studio gimmicks. Because coming up out of that Potomac River Swamp area, the empire of Go-Go, mm. from my time becoming a musician, you see, it was a conscious and things were kind of revolutionary because in the nation's capital, and my coming up, you know, it wasn't but so many ways out. I mean, I knew just by my structure that uh, I wasn't going to be no superstar athlete, you know, in, in high school. You know, and I knew that I um, wanted to make my mark and be something of myself. So I said, fly right. right. Let me uh, learn some music. Uh, and when I saw my godfather for the first time play a saxophone on TV, I said to my father, that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know when I would be able to do it. But once I got into middle school and was able to start taking band, and I did pretty well on the test, and I came home and showed my father my score. And that was uh, ambition enough for him to go take out that loan and buy me a saxophone. Mm. Wow. And, yeah. And music is healing and rejuvenating. And that was the main purpose of music. Because when you get deep inside of it, everybody have a song inside of their heart. And no matter what happens, and no matter what your feelings is, there's a music and a sonic wavelength that fits that, that motivates you, so you can just make it and achieve your objectives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for now, I'll, no matter what genre of music that people like, hip hop or or jazz or or whatever. Now you're hearing some real phrases. Now when you hear sonic movement, mm -hmm. now that's deep right there. That's deep. And that's positive. Yeah, I mean, too. you see, when I, when I look at it, right? Music and the musicians, the musicians have a very important part to play within a society. But I don't really feel as though they're taking that role. This is just my opinion. You know what I mean? I'm not an expert on anything, but I do have an opinion. And opinion is something that helps everyone to grow. Mm. Now, you see, the musicians could take a more conscious role within uh, what they're doing. You know, along with having a joyful time, you still need to help balance people's contents. Mm. What they listen to, how they react to what they listen to, because Music is so powerful, it transcends all art. And I'm not being partial, but music is the greatest art in the world. Mm -hmm. but okay, because music is something that's living and moving. When you look at a picture, it, yes, it's beautiful, but there's no breath of life in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You the looker. The onseer puts the breath of life into that picture by what you think. And your interpret interpretation of it is only your interpretation. Mm -hmm. But you see, the music transcends all language, barriers, ethnicities. And so therefore, if you've been blessed, which we all are blessed with a talent, and so if you know your talent and you're manifesting your talent 
for others to experience, then hey, don't fool them. Don't carry them, you know what I mean, down a dark valley, you know, uplift them mm. so they can motivate and escalate. And then we all can have a better society because we're in harmony. And the Almighty, however you perceive it, is the keynote. Mm. Yes, this round of applause goes right there. Man. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. I mean, your words are distinct words of wisdom. Uh, not just only in the music realm, but worldwide. Mm-hmm. Your 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 wisdom that you're sharing is just amazing and so positive. Well, I'm, I'm, okay, look on the real, right? As a musician, like I said from the beginning, coming up on that Potomac River swamp area next to the capital, the Empire of Go Go. You know, you you yeah. didn't have but certain ways out, and as a, a young a young teenager or something, right? You end up uh, getting involved with all kinds of things. You know, the ins and outs, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And if you're blessed enough and you have that intuition and uh, you and you can come up out of certain things, then it's your obligation to take your experiences and present them so that other people don't have to experience some of the things that you experienced and were able to come up out of it. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm saying is that me personally, I speak best when I speak from experiences. The best experiences I have is myself. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. <laughs> well, well when, you, when you came home uh, with your test score and it was really high and your, your father uh, wanted to to uh, set some things in motion to help you. Uh, so now, uh, did you choose the uh, alto sax or tenor sax or uh, a baritone sax or, or 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 just what what sax did what sax fit fit you the best or or was there another instrument first? No, no. Actually, like I, I said, right, it was one New Year's Eve. And I was, you know, downstairs in the living room. Everyone else was upstairs in the house. And I was looking at television, right? And my godfather was playing in a big band. And that big band he was playing in was Count Basie's band. Oh. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and he came out front and took a solo on his tenor saxophone. And I, when I saw him do that, you know, because the band was dressed in suits, they were looking nice, you know, and and he was sitting up front with the five saxophones in the front section, because you know how the big band thing go, five saxes, you know, trumpet, trombone, et cetera. Um, and then he got up and came on front, you know what that mean, and that, took that, that solo, right? And I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at, ah, uh, and then after he finished that solo, he spent that saxophone around. I said, man, I want to do that. You know, and then I was too young at the time, like I said, to even get a saxophone. So when I got in middle school and took the band test and brought it home, and because it was a tenor saxophone that Eddie Lockjaw Davis, the style is played, which is my godfather. Tenor was it for me. Tenor saxophone. Mm. And that fit my personality. I mean, I, you know, I know the fingering for all of them, but my personality comes forward most with the tenor saxophone. So, you know, that's my passion. That's where I feel as though I can really reach. Beautiful. Well, you know, you right right now you are inspiring so many people in so many places with your words of of, of uh, uh, historical aspect and what you actually experience. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mu- I mean, music, i be honest with you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I know a lot of people may say this, and might, this might seem like a run of the mill statement, but music actually saved my life, this, this tenor saxophone. And I'm going to tell you something, this tenor saxophone, I've had it since high school. Mm. And the saxophone has, you know, taken me all over the world. That's so awesome. <laughs> 
You know, so, you know, I, I'm in this music for life and to help life. Well, because, you see, the musician has an obligation to help the people to move in the right direction with the right beat and to keep them within harmony. Man, that was so great. Like, I just loved hearing all of his stories and, you know, all the amazing things that he's done and continues to do is just phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, to be where you can see on television one of your relatives as a, as a child, you see one of your relatives on television performing and you say, that's what I want to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now years later, hey, he's doing what he wanted to do as that he saw as a child. So that's, that's, that's what a great spirit. What a yes, great spirit. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a music break for some beats by yours truly. And then we'll be right back with music industry news after this. Okay.
we're back with music industry news, you know, with uh, all the stuff that's been kind of going down. It's just always good to, to get a handle on what's happening. Um, you know, there's there's news that kind of spills in from all over the place. So we do our best to make sure that you can get it all in one spot and, you know, good relevant information. You know, you can get your gossip and stuff, you know, elsewhere. You know, that's cool. That's, that's good for entertainment. But this stuff is meant to actually uh, be beneficial official for you to use for your career or even just as music lovers so you know there's some good stuff happening uh first off man okay so the memphis listening lab was recently completed so the lab is almost a 3,000 square foot audio library with 30,000 45s 10,000 lps 20,000 cds and more than 1,000 other pieces of musical, you know, paraphernalia and whatever. And it's also an event space, a listening room, and they have a podcast studio editing room. Guess what? You're not going to believe it. It's free and open to the public. So it's Man, a... You ain't said nothing but a word right there. <laughs> Right? Yeah, just so so awesome. So it's a nonprofit and all the contents are based around the collection of John King, who was a co-founder of Ardent Records. And you know, he was also a longtime Memphis music promoter, radio historian historian, and um it's just just massive that he's been able to use his collection for something like this. So, you know, it's kinda cool when I was uh, checking out the news about it. They showed a picture of him just kind of in awe at how everything came together. And so I was just in Memphis a couple years ago, right around this time. And I'm feeling like I need to go back right away <laughs> to check out the Memphis Listening Lab. So how awesome is that? I mean, I mean, from the news stories that have been popping up, this right there is going to rank up at the tip top because, and it's free. I mean, you see, now that's... Um, you know, I can say that's what a blessing that is, you know, what a, an opportunity that is. I mean, I can go on and on, but I mean, that's worth traveling to that area, to that city, just to attend, just to see that and participate. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better, man. I feel the same way. Mm. All right. And speaking of uh, opportunities, Spotify has noticed one. And so they're uh, considering, which I think actually means plotting, a move into live, virtual, and in-person events. So, I mean, this could be huge if you think about the marketing possibilities. So, you know, as you listen to Spotify, they're basically collecting all this data about you and, you know, creating these algorithms based on things that they think you like. You're um, pre-saving stuff that you're interested in. You're following artists that you're interested in. So now they can use all this amount of data that they've been collecting on everybody that's been using the streaming platform to be able to help artists plan concerts in areas that might be a little less populated but they would do well in or you know um, might be too small for headline performers but this is something that independent artists would be able to occupy so you know if they do move forward with this which like i said i imagine they 100 percent are the possibilities for um, independent artists is just infinite so it'll be interesting to see what comes of that strategies are extremely important in the business world, in life, in the music world, and in the business music world, and in the music business world specifically. So, I mean, that's that's uh, that's well worth taking a look at. Yes, yes. And so TikTok, you know, they recently had their uh, live option added. And so taking a look at that, that's also providing more opportunities for artists and fans to connect and quote unquote, take over social media. So, you know, we've talked about multiple times on here the way that the TikTok algorithm has been working has been in favor of independent artists and, um, you know, heritage songs, songs that have been out for a long time, but now they're kind of getting a, a rebirth due to people using the music in TikToks. So with that going on and now with them doing a live option, that means that, you know, concerts and live streaming opportunities could be coming up, you know, <laughs> much more strongly. I mean, once again, possibilities are endless. And TikTok is one of the most popular apps today. 
And there's over a billion users in 150 different countries. So, you know, once again, if, if that's something that you're thinking about taking advantage of, you definitely, definitely need to be a part of it. I know a lot of people kind of have, um, you know, there's a lot of group think uh, when it comes to TikTok, especially for um, millennials and on up for all generations, you know, it's like, okay, that's a Gen Z thing, you know, oh, it's just dances on there. That is not true. There's so much different content. So, you know, it basically just depends on what you feed the algorithm, what you see. So, you know, if you've been hearing that and kind of feeding into what people have been saying about that, dismiss that, you're going to miss out on some major opportunities happening here if you, you know, so just kind of reshape the way you think and figure out how to make TikTok work for you. Because, yeah, I mean, every month, every week almost, it seems like we're giving you more information about all the different things that are happening. So, you know, it's just kind of snowballing and you don't want to miss out. Right, because I've even in my research seen some 60 year olds, some 70 year olds that have found a certain type of niche and they've attached that to TikTok and the end result is is huge amounts of income in their various financial accounts, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're right, it's not just about seeing people dance, this, that, the other. You got to scrape that off and get to the crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is income. Yeah. Okay, so if you can if you can tilt that into a way that's going to generate some income for you, by all means, because hey, uh, companies are shutting down more and more every day. Mm -hmm. So become that entrepreneur. Find that entrepreneur that's inside you as a musician and turn that into a business acquisition and make some money from it. Yes, yes, 100% cosign. <laughs> All right, that does it for the first part of music news. We're going to take a quick music break and then we'll be right back with the second half of music news for this week. Okay.
Yeah. All right, and we're back with more music industry news. Last week, Billboard reported that uh, Tribe Called Quest have sold a portion of their royalty streams as a five-figure NFT. So this is Billboard that reported this, and they said that you know the winning bidder would collect sales, streaming, sync royalties, and all that stuff off of the albums, as well as singles that have been released by the group between 1990 and 1998. Yeah co-founder of uh, Tribe Called Quest, Ali Shaheed Mohammed, said the claims are quote-unquote not friggin' true. And he also said that Billboard knew it was a lie when they reported it. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. You know, of course, I shared the news as soon as I saw it. And then um, to find out that maybe Billboard hasn't been telling the truth about it is kind of interesting. So I'm not sure uh, what the vetting process was over there, but <laughs> to uh, he, he claims that they were doing it just for clicks. But that's a really, really specific story, and especially with the time frame being so specific. I'm kind of interested in the, the background behind that. But yeah, according to Ali Shahid, it's, it's not true. They haven't sold it and they're not giving away a portion of their royalties as an NFT. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that could, you know, and this is um, just, a, just a hypothetical, you know, sometime, okay, that company has been around for so long, maybe, you know, they're um, getting jealous of some of these other companies coming in and taking their steam. Mm. Uh, taking their attention from all the way from you know and so they have these publicists and they say do this and they do it and disregarding the authenticity of it yeah that makes sense yeah, so, yeah it kind of calls into question because you know they also report the numbers and how uh, music is doing and who's ranking where and so if their reporting can't be trusted in one facet then you know that's all I'm going to say about that, but <laughs> you, you kind of get where I'm going there, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And, you know, last weekend, the Summer of Soul dropped, um, you know, kudos to Questlove for, for making sure that that got out to the public. So, you know, if you're not aware of Summer of Soul or when the revolution could not be televised, uh, they hit three uh, during the three day weekend. They hit 650,000 as a weekend box opener, like at the specialty box offices. So it wasn't even just everywhere, but they already hit that in those special locations. It's also available on Hulu, but man, you know, it's, it's great that that's doing so well so far. Um, you know, just in case you're not aware of it, you know, it's about the Harlem Cultural Festival that took place back in the summer of 69. So yeah, it was the same year as Woodstock, but didn't get, you know, the press that Woodstock got. That was everywhere. But, you know, when they actually tried to sell the footage of this during that time frame, no one was interested. So it's just been sitting in the basement for the last 50 years up until now. And so, you know, it's just a phenomenal thing to see. Um, if you're an artist, you've got to see it. If you know an artist, you've got to see it. If you love music, you got to see it. If you love history, you've got to see it. It's got a little bit of, of something in there for everybody. Um, you know, it won awards at Sundance and it's got performances with, you know, all kind of greats. Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, Sly and the Family Stone. Like it's, it's too many to name. But, you know, kudos to uh, the numbers that it's making at the box offices so far. Well, you know, well, now you don't know. When I was a kid, kid, I mean, a real kid, kid, kid. Um, my folks, my folks were really into music, and up one day, uh, I'll never forget Klein Kleinman's Music Hall in Buffalo, New York. Um, my folks wanted to go see Sly and the Family Stone. <laughs> I can still remember it just as if it was right now, and so uh, heavyweight, just uplifting, just talented. Uh, heavyweight in, uh, entertainers, musicians, and oh man! So when you mention that name right there, <laughs> a lot of young folks they're not aware of who they are and what they did. And so a, doc, uh, a show like this will help educate you on just who they are and what they did. Yeah, and what they're still doing. Yep. Exactly. 
like you say, I mean, that's really important, you know, for those of us who who weren't around during that time. Like you hear the stories, but to just kind of watch things that kind of put everything in the perspective for you, it's just, yeah, it's definitely beneficial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another uh, hip hop uh, music related show, I should say, but um, it's a skateboard hip hop documentary called All the Streets Are Silent. So it's gotten a trailer that's been released and, you know, it's supposed to be coming soon. So that's really exciting as well. Um, it's going to have a score by Large Professor. So, you know, that's kind of the, the hip hop heads at heart know who he is. You know, the guy behind Nas, Tribe, you know, the extra P. It's really exciting to um, know what kind of work is going into this who's going to be a part of it but it's about the the marriage of skateboarding and hip-hop and what it's been like um in manhattan specifically in the late 80s and early 90s so i'm really excited to check it out make sure that you uh keep your your ears open for more information about that as soon as we get it we'll share it with you sounds good all right and that does it for uh music news for this week we're gonna take a music break and then we'll be right back to close out the night with you
right, and that's a wrap for this week's edition of Music Marvels with the Chicken Beats and Breezy Gibson. You know, we're really, really glad that you decided to spend this time with us, and we're excited to do it again next week. Yeah, I mean, you know, time rolls. It really rocks and rolls. And um, this little thing here that we're we're involved with is gaining a whole lot of momentum. So shout out to the listeners and shout out to the businesses that are um, in our realm. And so, uh, you know, that's a really, a really, really great thing. So uh, let's keep that progress and positivity flowing. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, so you know where to find us next week. Same time, same place. Tune in, tell a friend, and we'll see you then. Peace. Peace.